So welcome to this video, and this video is about the global fear agenda, a widespread agenda being uh, propagated through the media to spread fear, pessimism, negativity, anxiety, and also about what you can do about this agenda. So we're going to start with the music industry. These are messages from album covers. This is um, an album cover by the band Bastille. Doom days are coming. And this message is being propagated throughout uh, the music industry and throughout the media. This is just one example uh, from the band Bastille, who um, record companies are using groups and taking control of their artwork so they can get their messages of fear and doom out to hundreds of millions of children around the globe. So the artwork isn't always coming from the artists, it's coming from the record industry, record labels. And this idea of doom days are coming is a message, an idea they want to get into children's heads, that the future is dark and they should be worried about what's coming in the future. Now these are the lyrics to the song Panic Room by Aura, popular song. Hell raising, hair raising, I'm ready for the worst, so frightening, face whitening, fear you can't reverse. My phone has no signal, it's making my skin crawl. The silence is so loud, the lights spark and flicker with monsters much bigger than I can control now. Welcome to the panic room where all your darkest fears are going to come for you. Welcome to the panic room. You'll know I wasn't joking when you see them too. This exact same message of fear and doom and darkness is being propagated throughout the music industry. Here's another example which also featured the same artist. Take me through the night, fall into the dark side. We don't need the light, we'll live on the dark side. I see it, let's feel it. While we're still young and fearless, let go of the light, fall into the dark side. So this message is going out all through the music industry, specifically towards children, to you, towards young listeners, that the dark side is appealing, that they should turn away from the light and, um, and embrace what darkness has to offer. And um, it's a very nihilistic and um, dangerous message because it turns children away from the source of goodness and turns them towards badness. And obviously, Billie Eilish is the number one artist responsible for this. She's putting out very, very dark messages. Although she's loved throughout the music industry and she's very popular, if you analyse her messages to see what the nature of the messages, they're very dark and they inspire fear, just like this image. I mean, would you let your young children look at it, this image before they climb into bed at the end of the day? Or would you let your child listen to Billie Eilish songs? If you read the lyrics and watched the videos, you would know this is very um, fear-inspiring and darkness-inspiring information. And so the music industry is, industry is being used to spread messages of darkness and fear. Lewis Capaldi, divinely uninspired to a hellish extent. Every, little, every single song on this album, and I've read the lyrics to every single song, is pessimistic, dark, hopeless, nihilistic, there is no joy, no positive messages. Um, and um, again, I do believe that artists artists are being paid to sing the songs written by um, the music industry, the record labels, and to portray the artwork that they want to portray, that the record label wants to portray, so as to get these messages of fear and pessimism and darkness out there. Now, Netflix is, putting, is promoting a lot of fear-inspiring programs for children, The Dragon Prince, this idea of monsters so huge that the children haven't got a hope, haven't got a hope of conquering them, haven't got a hope of defeating them. And the dragon is representative of Satan. It's, um, Satan is represented as a dragon in the Bible. And so this idea of big, scary, ferocious, giant creatures that, um, I mean, you can see the size of this guy, it's, pro it's promoting images of fear to children. And there are so many. I just chose a few examples. If you go on Netflix Children, you see there are so many messages of fear. This is another one. Again, a huge giant creature um, towering down over the child. And all this child has is his telekinesis to defeat this, um, this huge creature. But obviously real children know they don't have telekinesis. And it brings ideas of huge, demonic, dark, powerful creatures into kids' minds. And the subtle, subtle message is that these are much more powerful than you. You don't have any power over them. Because kids can't get out their magic wand and their 
and their telekinetic abilities and defeat these things because they don't have them. And it's the same with this one, and also on Netflix. It's the idea of demons and monsters and darkness. And this guy's like some kind of superhero. But the real children, they don't have these superhero abilities. And so they, their minds are being flooded with these dark images of fear and uh, evil. And they are not told the only way to conquer them. They're told that they can use magic and witchcraft. And, and of course, none of these things work. And it's worth noticing that worth noting that this program, Troll Hunters, was made by a very prolific horror film director called Guillermo del Toro, who often has a lot of children in his horror films. So Guillermo del Toro now is making three different programs for Netflix, all aimed at children. So he's basically trying to frighten children now instead of adults. And again, this is Lego. Again, this agenda to frighten children. This is Lego, hidden side. And there are loads of different... Um, varieties of this this um this game this this lego release and again you can see the d the d on hidden the two d's are like scary eyes and you see the lady's got the axe and it's just another way to scare children so children are being scared fear is flooding into children through, through all these different avenues and it's on the tv and aimed at adults as well dystopian tv shows are all the rage now and you might have noticed there is lots of them, lots of dystopian TV programs. To name a few, Black Mirror, Handmaid's Tale, um, let me think, what else? Um, the Hunger Games was a huge dystopian uh, TV series. And you can probably think of some others, uh, Darkest Minds. These are all dystopian TV programs. And again, it spreads this fear, it injects this fear into the mind that the future is going to be a dystopia. It's going to be dark, it's going to be miserable, it's going to be no escape, and you're going to have your freedom take away from you. So, a nightmare disguised as paradise. So this is a message, children are getting this message a lot, that everything looks kind of okay in society, everything seems like it's going well, but actually, it's actually a nightmare, it's disguised, it's disguised, everything looks kind of fine, but under the surface is this, um, this dark future, this... Um, future devoid of light and it's hopeless and there's no escape from it so this message is going to children a lot through the media you might notice it yourself if you look at the tv programs that are abundant and and of course adults are not exempt from this this is a program on um i'm not sure what channel it's on but again it's 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 aimed at portraying it's aiming to portray this idea of a dark future so it says, in our future, all the children are dying. We have the ability to save them. All we have to do is kill everyone else. So this idea of the children, the children are getting this idea put in their heads. That there's, there is a dystopia coming and they will be the ones to most suffer. They'll be the ones suffering the most. So children are being bombarded with these fearful images of dystopia. And of course you have The Hunger Games, one of the biggest film, um, how would you call it, film series. Um, over the past 10 years, and um, very dark, very brutal, and again, the children are really, um, the children are the ones who suffer the most, the children are the ones who are um, controlled the most and used, basically, by the system, and so again, this idea that we are heading towards a dystopia is really being promoted heavily in the media, and has been for a very long time, and um, it just it's just to inspire children with fear. And again, Extinction Rebellion and the climate agenda is flooding people with fear, especially children, because children haven't seen this kind of thing before. Children haven't seen, you know, threats of doom and apocalypse. And we've had this before, and, um, and nothing really has happened, you know. this We've had the global, global warming concern before, and many, of, many adults have seen that, you know, often nothing bad happens. But children have no idea of, of these kind of things and they're just absorbing all this information that they're seeing that there's going to be an apocalypse they're being told there's going to be an apocalypse and the whole world is going to collapse and society is going to collapse and they're getting this dark imagery and of course adults are getting this dark imagery as well and people are really starting to believe and expect that there's going to be a very black future and so imagery like this promoted by Extinction Rebellion just adds to this 
mental picture. It encourages his mental pictures of doom and gloom, of darkness and misery. And, uh, and it basically spreads fear for the future. So instead of having hope for the future, which is what we all need, we all need to have hope for the future. It's this sense of hopelessness for the future, which is being propagated through the media and via uh, activist, activist organisations like Extinction Rebellion. Irrespective of how correct you think they are, the images they are putting out there create this mental picture of uh, apocalypse, an apocalypse, doom and gloom of millions of people dying and people lying on the streets. And this all fits in with other things which are happening um, in the media, which I'm going to tell you about shortly. But this idea of the, uh, death everywhere and people, people kind of... Um, People just giving up their lives and, you know, the, the end of humanity. And this, again, this is another image which just kind of corroborates corroborates this um, outlook which is being put into people's minds. So you have to understand that these, the, these ideas of human death and catastrophe and apocalypse and, and um, widespread extinction of human extinction, they are being placed in our minds by the media. They wouldn't be there. We wouldn't be, you know, the whole world wouldn't be considering apocalypse and extinction and death and if the media hadn't put such images like this in our minds. And they've been, you know, promoting Extinction Rebellion and all the images that come with it for a very long time now, for a year. And this is on National Geographic Kids' website, Seven Steps to Surviving an Apocalypse. And I say according to science, so they kind of back up, back up this idea with... Um, the name of science and it's basically aimed at children what would you do if the world was ending so this is just one example there are more to come that the media is saying that an apocalypse is going to happen but this article doesn't just talk about it's not climate apocalypse this article talks about a zombie apocalypse so this article is promoting the idea that a zombie apocalypse is very possible and then you've got books like this being released uh, for, for teenagers, surviving the zombie apocalypse. And again, you'll see why this message, I'll t show you in a minute, why this message is being promoted. But telling children that a zombie apocalypse is not only possible, but it's actually likely. Of course, the idea of a zombie apocalypse to you and I, as intelligent adults, seems uh, like a, fa a fantasy, a ridiculous I suggestion. But this is being put into children's brains it's not that it's actually likely and it's very possible so there's also newspaper articles we asked an expert how to survive a uk zombie apocalypse so again this they're asking experts scientists how to survive a zombie apocalypse well look a zombie apocalypse is a you know it's something you see in the hollywood movies okay so they're trying to bring this out of the realm of fantasy into the realm of reality. And of course, it's going to scare people. I mean, look at this image. You know, it's it's a cartoon, but it's pretty unpleasant. So it's it's creating fear for this terrible, terrible scenario of a zombie apocalypse in children's minds. And adults. This is an adult, also for adults. And again, this is in Huffington Post. How to survive a real walking dead zombie apocalypse. It's not a matter of if, but when. And it says at the bottom, it might surprise you to learn a real zombie plague could be closer than you think. Well, this is propaganda. This was released two years ago, 2017. And this is propaganda because I'll show you why it appears in other newspapers. And This is propaganda for spreading fear. There is so much fear propaganda, as you've seen in the music industry and uh, in the TV, and kids' TV on Netflix. So much fear propaganda, and now it's in the newspapers. Here's another one on Metro, which is the free newspaper which gets handed out all over London. Here's seven tips on how to survive a zombie apocalypse. Again, by scientists. So it backs itself up with science. But again, it's telling adults that how to survive a zombie apocalypse. And that they would need to know how to survive a zombie apocalypse. You know, so this again is spreading fear because if I told you that a zombie apocalypse was coming, how would you feel about that? If I told you it was definitely coming and you believed it was coming, then of course there's going to be fear and a massive amount of fear because nobody wants to be attacked by zombies. It's a terrifying idea. But kids are now being told 
that a zombie apocalypse is coming. This is The Last Kids on Earth. It's a TV series on Netflix at the moment. And kids are being encouraged, uh, having scenarios placed in their mind where they might need to know how to survive zombies. This program is all about a huge zombie apocalypse. There's just a few kids left and the zombies are everywhere and the kids have got to fight for their lives. And of course, it inspires fear, especially when the kids are, are being told in other areas of the media that a zombie apocalypse is likely and they need to know how to survive it. There is nothing more terrifying, probably nothing more terrifying for a young child to think that they might have to survive a zombie apocalypse and all the blood and gore and everything else which accompanies it because you know whenever you see zombie apocalypses um in the meat in the in films and programs and in video games there's always blood and gore and you know zombies getting chopped up and stuff so for the children to consider that this might be this might be what they have to do again it's spreading fear and it's ramping up the fear to this degree where children are terrified of what's coming around the corner. Dystopia, climate apocalypse, and also this whole um, zombie apocalypse. And so children are playing video games, immersive video games, uh, like Contagion. Uh, Contagion VR outbreak will immerse you in the middle of a zombie apocalypse. So not, not only are they watching programs and watching films and reading books about zombie apocalypses, but they're playing a very realistic, immersive video games about a zombie about zombie apocalypses. And notice it's called Contagion. Notice the biohazard symbol. So this is linking the whole zombie apocalypse to some viral outbreak, such as we have right now coming from China. Again, this is another zombie apocalypse. Again, spreading fear. Left for dead. If you just look at this image and imagine, imagine that this became real that you suddenly had to survive a zombie apocalypse and you had to deal with being hunted down by zombies who wanted to infect you. Again, it's absolutely terrifying. But kids are playing these very realistic games. There's so many video games telling children a zombie apocalypse is, uh, or showing them how real it, realistic it would be and how likely it would be. And it's all connected to this viral outbreak, this contagious viral outbreak. And so we come on to these... Um, this film came out in 2011, Nothing Spreads Like Fear, Contagion. And this film has the exact same plot as what's been happening in China. This lady comes back from Hong Kong and this vi she's got this virus, it spreads everywhere, and it's all about fear. It's all about spreading fear. And this is what's happening with the coronavirus and all these scenarios we're seeing and all this leaked, leaked information that's coming not from official sources. It's spreading enormous amount of fear and people thinking they're going to have to go into lockdown and be confined and have their freedom taken away from them. It's about spreading fear and connecting this whole viral outbreak to this idea of a zombie apocalypse. So World War Z, connecting it to this idea of war, of, um, you know, this zombie, uh, sorry, this infection spreading around the globe and it turning into some kind of um, war where people are kind of fighting for their lives. And this is a very subtle but all-pervading message coming through so many, so many parts of the media, including video games like Fortnite, which is also a zombie apocalypse, this idea of a war. And it's trying to spread fear. So if you look at this man here in this image look with a laptop on his lap, and he looks fearful. There's a coronavirus, fear, and World War Three coming. Why are you smiling? Because he's, he's reading all the stories and he's watching all these programs and he's afraid. And this is what's happening to people. They are absorbing all this fearful information and they're becoming very, very afraid. Because it's an agenda. It's a fear agenda. And it's basically, it's, it's a way of spreading spiritual darkness. Spiritual darkness spreads through fear. God, who is a very, very real spiritual entity, um, promotes himself through love. God is is love. And Satan, who is also a very real spiritual entity, um, propagates himself through fear. And I can tell you this with absolute certainty because I've been, um, I've known God for several decades and I'm, I became aware that Satan is very real and Satan propagates himself through fear. We are seeing a satanic agenda in society to spread um, 
spread fear and create a fertile ground for Satan to spread his darkness into the minds of millions of people. And God is the only answer. Because what's happening in society is that, um, and through the media, is that a trap, a trap is being created. So in people's minds, this fear, this, this great fear is being generated. Fear of the future, fear of dystopia, fear of um, darkness and evil and fear of illness and these um, contagious viruses and, and even fear of zombies. People are now getting this fear that, uh, of a zombie apocalypse because it's been planted in their mind. So what this does, this fear, fear mentality, fear for the future, fear for your safety, it creates this um, kind of trap. People start to feel like they're trapped. There's no escape. Because most people, if, if um, people who don't know God, they tend to get their sense of security from feeling like they're in control of their life. When we feel in control of things, then we feel secure. But when we feel like everything's out of our control and we're we don't know what's going to happen to us, then this is when people start to panic a little bit. And so as you have the media flooding people with this idea that things are happening which they are completely powerless to stop or they have no power to control, especially when there's a killer virus, which could um, could result in them being quarantined and being trapped in their cities and having their freedom take away, taken away, this is when people start to panic and get afraid, deeply, deeply afraid, because there's nothing they can do. And their minds start to um, consider all these images they've been shown over the over the decades in films and in you know in TV programs. All these scenarios start kind of uh, presenting themselves in their minds when they when they see what's happening and they they feel like they're they're they might be trapped or they might have their freedom taken away. They start imagining all these scenarios which have been placed intentionally placed in their minds by the media, by Hollywood films and by TV programs and by books and also now through, um, through the um, music industry. All these scenarios and ideas and through the video game industry as well, all these scenarios are arising in people's minds because they've been designed, the mind has been des programmed to think along certain lines and to connect certain events with certain consequences because it's a trap of fear. The media has been doing this for a very long time, creating this trap of fear in the human mind. And so the only antidote to this trap of fear, this only, the only antidote to this, um, this realm of darkness which the media has been creating, because it doesn't exist without the media, this whole realm of darkness is being created by the media. If you take the media out of the equation, and you don't have the media putting these images or these pictures of the future in people's minds. It doesn't exist. This future, this future, this dark future of pessimism and hopelessness and despair and, and suffering and pain and misery, it doesn't exist. The media has put it there. And so we have to remember what's true. The med what the media presents us is not true. What is true is what God presents us. God presents us with his perfect peace. God presents us with security and safety and protection. When you know God, when you actually turn towards God and you actually turn towards his light and his peace, then you will not be concerned about what the media is putting out there, all these terrible scenarios and these fears for the future, because you will know that God is protecting you. You will know that you are safe with God. Because all this stuff has been predicted. Everything that's happening in the media has been predicted. In you know the end times in the Bible, in the book of Revelation, all this has been predicted thousands of years ago. So God is in control of this. We have to put our faith in God and trust that God can protect us because God can protect us. He can keep us from fear, which is the most important thing. God can keep us from fear and he can keep our heart at peace. And he's given us, he's given us the free gift of salvation from the darkness with Jesus. Jesus is salvation from the darkness. And the media is creating a world of darkness, flooding human, human minds with darkness so that they create what they are envisioning. They create their, this vision of darkness and panic and fear. And Jesus is the way out of this. I can guarantee you.